So you are not broken when you emotionally eat. So let me explain. And if you're new here, welcome. My name is Michelle. I'm a certified holistic nutritionist specializing in emotional eating. So a lot of the times when women come to me and they emotionally eat, they feel something's wrong with them. They're broken. That's sort of the inner dialogue. Something's wrong with me. Why can't I just get this under control? And I was the same way. I thought something was wrong with me. I looked around at everyone around me and they seemed to be able to be normal around food, to not obsess about food. And I thought, why can't I just get a handle on this? Why am I hungry all the time? Why am I so out of control? And so what I want you to take away from this is that you're not broken. When we have this pattern, when you're an emotional eater, emotional eating is a coping mechanism. And it's something that would have happened when you were really young. And it's something that you use food. So a coping mechanism means that you are coping with something. You are coping with discomfort, distress, stressors in your life. And You weren't given the tools or the modeling to really be with this discomfort. You might have had parents or caregivers or those around you not having the greatest relationship to food, not being able to move through their emotions, and not being able to show you how to do this in a way that supported you. And so maybe everyone around you has this relationship to food that seems, oh, they don't obsess about it, but they might have something else. And so if you have this coping mechanism and you've been using willpower for years and years, thinking something's wrong with you, you just need more willpower, it's not going to get to the root of this. It's not going to shift the pattern. If you've spent, you know, a few years, a decade, a couple of decades using willpower and you look back at your pattern and it hasn't resolved it, that's way too much time. Because if you were to actually create a new habit for yourself, it should only take about 66 days. But if you are trying to willpower and willpower your emotional eating and you haven't figured it out in all of those years, something more is going on. And so when you have a coping mechanism, it's really deeply ingrained. It's very automatic. It's subconscious. And you need different tools to resolve it. You need a different way to get out of this. You can willpower all you want. What you're doing when you willpower is sort of building up more and more pressure. So notice when you willpower, you can restrict and restrict for a while and you bounce back. So when you use those surface solutions like the diets or even you have surgery, um, you use pills, maybe if you're even going to therapy, you can kind of hold off for a little bit and it bounces back. So that's telling me that you haven't hit the root. There hasn't been a shift in how you're being. And so just notice if this is resonating for you. That means that you haven't actually given yourself what you need and resolved this pattern. So how could you not use food? You're not broken. Of course you would go to food. You don't have what you actually need to move out of this pattern. So because emotional eating is this coping mechanism for stressors and discomfort, and we didn't have this model to us, we weren't guided through this, we didn't have parents or caregivers to help us regulate our emotions, move through that, we now need to learn how to do that. We need to catch our triggers. And so when I'm working with clients with this particular pattern, that's all we're doing. We're just looking at your emotional eating pattern. We're looking at how you're triggered. We're looking at when this comes up and we're really getting into the root of it. And so what does that look like? That looks like you learning to discern true from emotional hunger because you need to start catching when are you actually triggered into your emotional eating? Are you telling yourself you're overeating when you haven't been nourishing yourself? And so you need to learn how to start nourishing yourself and learning where your emotional eating triggers are. You also need to look at how you're digesting foods, the types of foods you're eating, how it's impacting your digestion, because when our digestion is off, that directly impacts our mood. Our brain and our gut are connected. This is going to impact our mood. We need to look at that. So if you're going to talk therapy and you're just talking and talking and you're not looking at the types of foods you're eating, that's a contributing factor to this pattern and your overall well-being and feeling resourced in your body to actually Um, feel good and have capacity to go deeper. It's not just food is food and now I've resolved like my relationship to food. No, you have a connection to food because it's actually doing something biochemically in your body. 
And so when you learn to truly nourish yourself, listen to your hunger signals and know that you're sat truly satisfying hunger as well as digesting well, that's going to impact your mood and your pattern around your emotional eating. And so if you haven't been doing this, of course, you know, there's a missing piece here. You're also going to look at your body. If you're not understanding of your body or accepting of it and you're pushing it, even not getting enough sleep, that triggers mood imbalance for the next day, which triggers emotional eating. The more imbalanced your mood is, the more you feel out of control with food, the more you can shame shame yourself and spiral into this pattern. You have to look at how you're relating to your body. And of course, when you're triggered into this, we have to look at the emotions triggered. We have to learn how to be with them, move through them and resolve them so that you start meeting your true needs. Learning how to be with them is one of those needs so that you're not going to food to kind of cover it up. Because every time you get triggered and you go to food, it's like you're putting food on top of it and more and more of this sort of emotional um, energy in your body is building up. And at some point, like when you're on those diets, you can't do it anymore. You pull yourself out of it or life throws you this really big trigger or situation. You can no longer willpower your way through a diet. This is where you have to start looking at the root to shift this pattern because your old tactics are no longer working. When you get into the root, you don't have to do tactics. You don't have to willpower. You actually start shifting the pattern to giving yourself what you needed. Like I started off saying, this is a coping mechanism. You're coping with life, but you want to move into thriving because there's nothing wrong with your emotions. We need to have food in our life. We need to move around in our body. We need to relate to them in a healthier way than we've been doing. We've been using food as this band-aid and it's not meant for that. It's not meant to completely shut us down or soothe us. Yes, food can be comforting when you have a healthy relationship to it, but it's not the be all end all. And so if you haven't looked at these areas, you haven't done this deeper work, of course you're still using food to soothe because you haven't hit the root. You need to hit the root. You need to get into that root and start transforming. That's what's going to shift this pattern. And that happens in the body. It happens through experience. It happens through step-by-step process. And if you haven't been doing this and you're just willpowering, you're not going to shift the needle. So look back at how long you've been emotionally eating, how many years and decades. That means you haven't gotten into the root. You don't understand where this pattern is coming from. You don't understand yourself. And the first step to shifting this pattern is awareness and understanding yourself so that you can give yourself the right tools, the right support to actually resolve this. And so when I finally got this, my emotional eating pattern shifted. And when my clients get this, their pattern shifts as well, much more quickly than me. And I'm not saying this is a short process. For me, it took a couple of years. My emotional eating episodes went from a few times a week to maybe once a month to once every six months. And then I remember having another one, but there was so much space. I could see the pattern really clearly. And now my clients are doing it much more quickly because I have a process. I've just looked back at all of the things that I did and through my education and my experience, I've created a process so that within 12 weeks, they're getting a hold of this pattern, resolving it. And of course, if they need additional support, it's there. But within that 12 weeks, I see significant change. So that is what is needed to really resolve this. And that's why you're not broken. This is a coping mechanism. It's deeply ingrained and we need different tools than what you've been trying. And so when you really get that, you're going to realize that everything that you've been doing was an adaptation. It's not really who you are. And now you need to learn how to reconnect back to yourself. So the first step to doing that is really learning to discern truth from emotional hunger. And this is the first step I give to all of my clients. And if you'd like that um, resource, I have a free guide called What Are You Truly Hungry For? And in this guide, it's going to teach you the difference between true and emotional hunger, how it feels in your body. It's going to give you tangible steps on what it looks like and how to start catching your triggers. This is the doorway to start seeing when you're emotionally eating versus when you are actually hungry. And this is going to give you great insight. And so if you want to dive in deeper, you're ready to resolve your emotional eating. The next step would be to find out more about my 12 week program, the emotional eating evolution program. In this program, you get the step-by-step process 
to move through this pattern, to start shifting your relationship to food, your body, and your emotions so you finally get into the root and resolve your emotional eating sustainably so that you can finally feel at ease and confident around food and in your body. This is about getting into the root, not just surface solutions and still having all of that talk and shame spiraling. This is about getting into the root and resolving this pattern so that you feel like you're thriving versus just surviving. So if you have any questions about what I've shared today, please let me know. If you have any ahas as well, let me know. So thank you so much for watching. Please be sure to like and subscribe. And I look forward to sharing more with you. And I hope you have a great day. Thank you.